Okay, welcome everybody to today's CPG Masterclass webinar with Dr. Sue Sat Shapcott. Thank you for all attending. Um, before we do get started, as, as always, I'll just go through a couple of uh, rules. If you could just check your microphones are all muted, and but you are more than welcome to keep your video screens on if you want to be visible. And at the end of the webinar, we will have a short Q&A as always. So if you do have any questions for Sue, please post them in the chat option in the button below on your screens. And I will go through those afterwards uh, for 10, 15 minutes, asking them to Sue. And hopefully we can get as many as uh, we can answered. I'll hand you straight over to Sue um, so she can get started. Uh, she will be presenting on growing golf participation by developing a sense of belonging. Sue. All right, thank you very much, Tom. Thanks everyone for um, joining this webinar. I know that I've enjoyed the ones that um, I've watched so far, so um, hopefully this one will give you some food for thought too. Um, so this webinar is gonna be about using social science to increase retention and participation at, at your golf facilities. Um, just a little bit about me to begin with. Um, I'm a member of the British PGA. I qualified in 96, um, spent some time playing on, on tour. And in 2000, I came over to the States um, initially to work for Hank Caney um, in, in Dallas, Texas. And although I was pretty confident with my technical expertise, then I wanted to better understand how I could motivate my students better, how I could create a culture that um, was gonna keep them in the game and that kind of drove me down a research route um, where the end result was I, I got a PhD in education and my research really focuses on the role that coaches and the environment play on increasing the retention of golfers at your facility. So um, I'm gonna go over some of the, some of the research, but um, also give you an idea of how you can use it in a practical sense at your facility and give you some examples of um, things that I see, ideas that you can uh, consider in terms of trying to create belonging um, at your facility. Okay, so this webinar is gonna have kind of four distinct areas. We're gonna talk about what, what is a sense of belonging, um, what we know about golfers experience, why belong is, belonging is important, and then strategies, practical ways that you can incorporate some of this research into the work that you do. Um, now, unless you've been under a rock for the last few years, then um, you probably have heard of the term sense of belonging. And it's one of those kind of broad, slightly nebulous ideas where, um, you know, we talk about we've got to make people feel welcome at our facilities. We've got to give them a sense of belonging. But what does that actually mean? So that's one of the, the goals of this webinar. So we can kind of put some definition to that um, from a um, psychological perspective. Um, before we do that, I'm going to just play you a couple of short videos of other organizations and corporations who have also um seeing a sense of belonging as a way of um, developing retention so it's going to give you some ideas of how other industries and organizations are using um sense of belonging to, to grow participation this one's from uh, gaa So I'm not getting any sound from the video. You may just oh, you're not getting the sound. You may need to share your sound on your computer. Just just go on the like like you did with the share screen. Okay. 
Sorry about that. How about I just kind of send you the links to these after? Yeah, um, so that's fine. Don't um, so that we don't uh, mess around with them. Um, but probably the the graphics on that last one kind of give you an idea about how the GAA are using this idea of um, creating belonging um, in their sports. So um, what I want you to do is when you think about creating a sense of belonging at your facility or trying to make it welcoming, what are the kind of things that come to mind? So um, just kind of make a note in the in the chat area there. So what does belonging mean to you or if you're thinking about trying to make your facility more welcoming to people what does that mean to you what kind of areas would you would you think about so just kind of make a couple of notes in the uh, chat area I can see community fun for events, feeling safe, know people, friendliness, friendships. Yep, yep. Great. So yeah, there's some there's some um, some good ideas coming coming in there about um, what belonging means to you, what creating a friendly environment means to you. Um, and in order to study these kind of things so that we can use them in practical ways, then um, we need we need a definition of of what it is. And from a, a psychological perspective, when we when we measure belonging, then we're really focused on three key areas that overlap with a lot of the things that you said. Um, so when people have a sense of belonging, they have a sense of membership in a community, okay? So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's membership of a club, but you feel that you have a membership of a community. Um, it means that you're accepted in the community. So regardless of your gender, your color, your sexual orientation, the color of your hair, then you feel accepted in that community. And then the last one is that you feel a positive affect, meaning that when you go to that place, in this case, a uh, golf place, then you feel um, happy. It makes you feel good. So we've got these three pillars that are connected to um, a sense of belonging. So membership, acceptance, and positive affect. And those were the things that we looked at when um, we studied a group of Australian golfers um, to understand what their experience was in golf. So um, in, in partnership with Golf Australia, we looked at 650 Australian golfers and we were interested in what it was um, that predicted their sense of belonging, okay? And the results were pretty interesting. So predictors of belonging were that um, they perceived the culture as um, being growth minded. And we're going to talk about what that is in a minute. Um, they perceived the culture as having low levels of environmental stereotyping. And another predictor of belonging was handicap. So as handicap went down, sense of belonging in that environment went up. So that one's probably related to affect. If you have a lower handicap, maybe you'll feel a bit happier. Um, so we had cultural mindset, environmental stereotyping, and, and handicap. Um, interestingly, what were not predictors of belonging was the type of facility people were at. So whether it was a, a public golf course, a private golf course, then that didn't make any difference. And years playing golf was not a predictor of belonging. So the longer someone um, played golf didn't necessarily mean um, that they felt a higher sense of sense of belonging, which was pretty interesting. Okay, so let's just kind of give you more information about um, what, we, what we mean by cultural mindset. So many of you have probably 
um, read some of Carol Dweck's work about growth and fixed mindsets. Um, and usually we talk about mindsets in terms of how we think about our own ability to do something. If we have a growth mindset, then we believe that ability is something that can be learned and developed. Um, if we have a fixed mindset, we believe that ability is something that's set in stone. Now, a cultural mindset is the message that the environment gives to us. So if I'm in a growth-minded culture, then the messages that I'm getting from the environment are things like, um, you know, here we think everyone can learn to play golf. Um, golf is something that is a skill that can be developed. We've got programs that are going to help you improve your game. This person over here only learned to play two years ago. Now he's, um, you know, playing in club competitions. So creating a culture where people feel that even though they haven't played golf before, it's something that they can learn and develop, which kind of sounds pretty obvious, I know, but as I'll show you a little bit later, that isn't always the case. So creating a culture of learning instead of a culture of genius is one way that you can increase sense of belonging at your facility. Um, if you want to read more about that, um, I just put in a couple of books here that may be of interest to you. So um, Carol Books, uh, uh, Carol Dweck's book, Cultural Mindset, The New Psychology of Success, um, which talks about some of her research. And then Matthew Saeed took her research um, and put it into a book called Banks, which is um, also a great book and more kind of sports oriented. So that's one main predictor of belonging. The other one is environmental stereotyping. Um, so that's creating an environment where um, whoever it is that shows up feels that, you know, again, going back to this acceptance idea, feels that they're um, accepted, um, they're brought into the community, they're treated the same, whether they're old or young, whether they're male or female, whether they're black or white, um, whether they're gay or straight, then just creating an environment where everyone um, is, is treated respectfully is one of the main predictors um, of, of uh, belonging. And interestingly, with environmental stereotyping, then one of the best ways um, as leaders that we can um, take care of this is to demonstrate as a leader the kind of behavior that we want our culture to represent. So that means that if we hear kind of racist, sexist jokes, then um, you know we we kind of go out of our way to 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 quash them and and don't let them um, perpetuate in in the environment. So creating a culture which is has low levels in, of environmental stereotyping is going to increase everyone's sense of belonging. So those are the two main. Um, factors that can contribute to a sense of belonging. Um, a great book to read about environmental stereotyping and how it affects people um, is this book called Whistling Vivaldi. Um, and it just kind of gives examples of the research and then again the application of it, but not necessarily in um, a golf context. So I did a little Google search just to give you some demonstrate or some examples of how these ideas can end up being integrated into the golf culture and have a negative effect. Um, I know probably the print here is, is pretty small, um, but I found a, a, golf, um, uh, a golf school who was given, you know, had secrets to playing golf. Um, and the first secret that they had on their website was that the younger you begin to play, the easier it will be to learn things about golf. Okay, yes, we know that that could be true. Although there are exceptions to every rule, in the majority of situations, the later that you decide to learn golfing, the harder it will be to grasp and master. So if we think back to our cultural mindset, then you know, just that statement there is going to have a negative effect um, on people who are thinking, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll learn to, to play golf. Maybe this golf club is for me. So it's going to have a negative effect uh, for that. Um, another thing that they had on their website was uh, the higher level that you have for natural talent, the quicker you will become better at your sport. Again, you know, we're not debating what natural talent is here. 
but we're just saying that if you have those kind of messages on your website or your communication, then that is going to lower um, people's sense of belonging at your facility. Um, also, um, have a picture here, not of the same school, but of a um, typical teaching staff. So, um, you know, if you're trying to where, you know, everyone feels that they're accepted, then, you know, trying to diversify the kind of images that you have on your website is a really simple and easy way um, to make people um, feel that they have a place at your facility. And then I had a um, joke here about um, women golfers, which, you know, easy to find. And so just trying to, um, you know, be aware of kind of these, these cultural stereotypes and jokes that we can sometimes see as being harmless, but um, can have a negative effect on um, people's sense of belonging. Um, just very quickly, then, um, if you're interested in how um, men and women's sense of belonging broke down, then um, the predictors of uh, male golfers' sense of belonging was again cultural mindset. So, a growth minded culture is a significant predictor of them feeling a, a sense of belonging. Environmental stereotyping, same thing. Um, handicap, significant predictor. And for men only, years playing was a significant predictor of belonging. So, the longer they played, the more their sense of belonging. For women golfers, then it was again just cultural mindset. So growth minded culture, environmental stereotyping, um, lower levels of that predicted sense of belonging and handicap. So there was some gender differences, but if you, um, you know, all together, then, um, you know, the, the two main factors were the, the mindset, cultural mindset and the environmental stereotyping. Okay, so why does that matter to us? So why do we care whether people feel a sense of belonging? Why does GAA invest a lot of money in developing um, adverts that create sense of belonging? Why does Airbnb spend money on um, adverts that nurture this sense of belonging? And for golfers, sense of belonging was a predictor of exactly the behavior that we want our golfers to engage in. Okay, so if we want people to play more golf in the future, we know that from all of the factors that we measured, all of the demographic information, then the only significant predictor of sense of belonging, I'm sorry, the only predictor of whether someone would play golf again in the future was their sense of belonging. Okay, so we know that it's a big driver of people's future engagement with our game. Um, many of you are instructors like me, um, and I'm interested in what will um, encourage people to take more lessons in the future. And we know that, again, a sense of belonging is a significant predictor of that, um, as is their handicap, um, as is gender, more women take lessons than men, um, as number of years playing golf goes up, the likelihood of them taking lessons go down. But belonging again was the main predictor of whether someone will um, take instruction again in the future. And then in the golf industry, we've had a big push um, to drive participation by asking golfers to invite other people to come and play. And um, if we look at the predictors of them actually doing that, again, then a sense of belonging is one of the main predictors of whether someone will invite their friends to play in the future. Um, years playing, as years playing goes up, the likelihood of people inviting their friends goes down, which, which is a little bit worrying. And um, with handicap too, as handicap goes down, the likelihood of them inviting people to play, friends to play goes up. But the consistent thing here with all of these um, future behaviors is sense of belonging. So um, that's why it matters to us as an industry and as a, as a business, if we can create a higher sense of belonging in people who we engage with, people who come into our facility, then we know that we increase the likelihood of them engaging in the behaviors that we want them to. So creating that growth-minded uh, culture 
where we where people feel that they can they too can develop the skills to go and play golf um create create an environment that is low on the environmental stereotyping so just being really aware of the imaging and the communication that we send out so uh, trying to create a culture where people feel um, accepted all of these things together really make a difference so something for you to think about and obviously you're not going to do that right now but um, we all have time on our hands at the moment and so thinking about um, how you can take this research and then use it at your facility then um, a good exercise to do is to um, if you're you know sending out um, marketing emails then think about the language that you're using in um, that that email think about the images that you're using in that email think about the, the messaging are you creating a sense of belonging in the language that you're using so are you really creating a growth minded culture um, are you making people feel that they have acceptance are you talking about golf ability is something that can can grow so you know as you go about um, you know your marketing campaigns as we start thinking about getting back to golf then think about how some of this research can um, fit into that so um, that can be something to at least think about as we uh, move through this hopefully uh, last end of the shelter at home phase and get back to golf okay um, I would welcome you know questions now but if anyone has um, questions about the research or wants more information then I absolutely welcome um, any inquiries that you have and um, if you want to um, follow me on Twitter there's my Twitter um, account but um, Tom are there any questions that have come up uh, not yet. I'll open up the Q&A now. So people, if you do have uh, any questions, please post them in the chat. I will work through them. Um, while we're waiting for them, I guess I'll, I'll start things off, So if that's okay. Um, yep. During my university dissertation, I focused on human identity and consumer behavior and that sort of stuff. What, um, the biggest thing that came out for me was the use of social groups, so encouraging um, people getting involved with your uh, you know, like your, your, your fiddle groups, your member groups playing on the weekend. How important is that in relation to sense of belonging? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's really, really important. And, um, you know, one way that I take this and think about it with, with my business is that, um, you know, we all know people who come and they, they want to play golf, they take lessons, then the next step is for them to to go and play um join a league or you know join in in the club competitions and so um what what we do is we facilitate that for them so you know our instructors see it as part of their job to introduce them to other players um you know and you know just say to the group who are introducing them to you know tom is new um I know that you'll take good care of him. He's looking to make new girlfriends. Um, and so we see that facilitation as part of our role as instructors to make sure that uh, new players do have a way of being included um, in groups. But yeah, I, I think it's a, a big part of it. And the behaviors that they demonstrate as a result of increased sense of belonging, we looked at playing golf and uh, taking up golf instruction. Is, mm -hmm. it, is it just focused on those or is it more, is it more expansive? So, because again, some of, the, some of the stuff I found was that people were taking holidays, so uh, golf trips were benefiting from it. Uh, it benefits the wider industry, right? Right, so we didn't measure that. So we didn't um, ask people to indicate that. So that wasn't something that we specifically looked at, but my sense is that yes, it would extend to, you know, golf trips, golf holidays, you know, joining, um, club events yeah i would i would imagine that it would extend to 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 anything like that great okay uh, a couple of questions coming in now uh, one from jose um how does the one hour individual lesson model influence this any sort of thoughts on that yeah i think that um you know whether it's a one hour individual lesson whether it's a one hour group class, whether it's a series of group class, then, you know, the instructor, um, you know, can create a 
culture just even if it's one-on-one -on -one. so you know you're going to be messaging you're going to be communicating no matter you know what you say or, or don't say so even on in a one-on-one -on -one, then you know you can keep giving feedback in that if it's beginner golfer then you know you know golf is hard we all we all struggle to begin with it's part of the process but you know you're on your on your path to improving this is what improvement looks like for for everyone so even if it's one on one just kind of continuing to reinforce this idea that you know golf ability isn't something that you've got or don't have golf ability is something that you can learn and it's my job to help you and um it might get messy along the way but we're, we're going to get there so you know even one on one you can create a culture that is conducive to developing belonging Excellent. A uh, really good question from Andrew. When new players are waiting to get on the course, get a handicap, get involved more, what ideas in the short term of their development of sense of belonging can you do practically to, I guess, increase that process? I'm sorry, Tom, you just cut out a bit at the start of that question. Okay, apologies. Um, a question from Andrew who was asking, when new players are waiting to get out onto the course and get a handicap and develop that sense of belonging, are there any key practical ideas you can do in the short term to, I guess, increase that process? I'm really sorry. I didn't hear that again. Okay, just bear with me two seconds. Let me just make sure. Okay, can you hear me better now? Yeah. Okay, great. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, a question from Andrew. Um, when new players are waiting to get out onto the course, get a handicap, uh, in the short term before they've developed a real sense of belonging. Are there any practical ideas you can do that increase that process? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so practical ideas that, that we've done is, you know, we have, you know, happy hours, wine tasting, and not just for, for women, for men and women, um, just to try and create that um, community. And in those um happy hours then you know i i try and get our instructors to really look out for the people who um you know are standing on their own don't know anyone um make sure that they go and chat to them introduce them to, to other players so kind of ha we have events that combine um social events and instructional events which i know can get a bit dangerous if you're combining alcohol and golf clubs but um we we kind of combine the two and the instructors are really conscious of facilitating um, the introduction of, of people. So we see our jobs as much as, you know, giving a few tips perhaps, but introducing people. So kind of connecting people, being a, a, a social um, networking service almost. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, a couple of questions that tie in together from Hani and Alvaro. Focusing on the perception that golf is a for a wealthier established uh, class how do you overcome areas or from your perspective how would you overcome um, those sort of barriers yeah i think that um one of the most powerful tools that we have is the images that we use in any kind of promotional or marketing um campaign so um marketing then um, uh, um, try and represent as many different backgrounds as we can. Um, now I partner with um, the city of Madison which has four public golf courses so you know it, it you know is more natural for us to do that. we're trying to provide a service to um, you know public golf course players but I think that um, we sometimes under the the leverage we have just with the images that we use in emails on our websites, um, you know, they just they just volumes. If you can, if you can, um, if someone sees a a website or an email and can identify with someone that's represented in it, then I think that's that's a really valuable tool to have that we don't use enough. Um, golf photographs are very one dimensional, and so just trying to change that around a little bit is is helpful okay great i hope that answered your question to both of you uh, good question from 
uh, Malcolm, uh, would you agree creating, it's a very good question for the current situation we're in, I suppose, as well, actually, in terms of, would you agree in creating online groups for golfers is another way of um, generating belonging and in, including people within a group and in, in your lessons, for example? Yeah, I do. Um, and I, I, I'm guilty, certainly, of not doing that during this lockdown, but I've heard some great stories of people who have and, um, you know, have created online communities um, like doing pub quizzes, that kind of thing, um, just to try and keep that social cohesion. Um, so yeah, I think that would be a, a great idea and, and, you know, really probably very valuable in, in re retaining uh, your, your client base or your membership just to kind of keep that social cohesion during this time. Yeah. Okay. Um, a question from Ricardo. Uh, he's in a private club setting with an academy that's open to the public. How do you create a sense of belonging with external students in a what is usually a pretty exclusive environment? Yeah, that's that's a little bit tougher, isn't it? Um, so I don't know whether your your golf academy, you know, can do or does events just for members of your academy, or whether it is more of a kind of transactional thing when people have to come and take instruction, and then that's the last you you see of it. But you know like the previous question, maybe creating more of an online community for people who aren't members of the club, but are clients in your golf academy would be one way of, of doing it. Um, and then, you know, golf outings away from the academy might be another way of, of doing it too. But yeah, that certainly provides, you know, more challenges. Uh, good I think question. Oh, go on, sorry, carry on. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I think there are creative ways of, of doing it, particularly with the online stuff um, that, that we can use now. Okay, great. I hope that answered your question. Uh, a really good one from Clara, actually, as well. She's looking at, um, is, it, is it bad for clubs to attract players um, for, who might not show certain behaviours? So I sort of flip that a little bit in that, is it better for different pros working in different aspects of the industry? to focus on better or worse players? Is there a segmentation I mean, process there that you so if you're a coach, is it better to focus mm -hmm. on lower, um, uh, higher handicap players or, or uh, not so good players than maybe, for example, uh, tourism boards to focus on higher, better players who are more likely to spend? Yeah, that's, it's a good question. I mean, if, if we look at, you know, the most well-known coaches, then you know they have enough um, pedigree to be able to really um, have a neat client base, and that's fine. And you know that that that's great. But you know the way that I look at it is that 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 isn't me. Um, I and so therefore it makes more sense as a business for me to go after the 96% of the golfing population, so the non-elite golfers. Um, and so I guess in a way, I've segmented myself that way where I have, you know, I focus my business on recreational golfers. Um, if you have enough clients and you have a niche strong enough to focus on elite players, then, you know, that's, that's fantastic. Um, I'm not sure there's gonna be that many um, coaches who are going to be able to do that just because of the the numbers um, but if you can that's great um, and so in a way I guess I have segmented myself by saying um, I'm I'm more interested in grassroots recreational golfers people who play for fun not people who are um, looking to um, play high performance golf and so that's kind of my niche which then is very broad within that niche so you know if you have the numbers to to form a business but just based on elite elite coaching great um i think the rest of us or most of us won't have the ability to do that okay hope that answered your question clara uh one from ola Jide. how do you influence sense of belonging in a new player when drawing a group of players of higher ability so i'm guessing for the first time ever yeah that's yeah that is is tricky and i would put almost I would put as much energy, if I was introducing a new golfer to more established golfers, 
I would do as much work with the established golfers than the new golfers, meaning, um, you know, saying to them, you know, you were a newer golfer once, you remember how hard it is. Um, it's his or her, you know, first time playing with better golfers, you know, be empathetic, be kind. Um, um, you know, he or she has a lot of potential. You know, I, I thought it'd be good for him to play with you because I know that um, you'll take good care of him. And so, you know, I would, I would do work with the other golfers as much as with the newer golfer who is going to be playing with them. So, um, you know, I don't know whether that answers kind of the, the question, but it is difficult. And, um, you know, the last thing we want with new golfers is playing with people who, um, you know, put the newer golfer off. And so that's why I would put some emphasis on kind of working with the golfers who were more experienced so, so that they are more likely to give the newer golfer um, a, a good experience. Okay, great. Uh, I think that's it for the questions. I've got one final one, just out of interest, because you're based in America, Sue. Um, so some of the mm -hmm. principles that you've discussed from research, how applicable is that to other countries in terms of, is there a cultural role to play in how sense of belonging is important? Um, I, I think that there's going to be cultural differences within golf. Um, you know, I think that in many ways, the UK and the Europe and Europe are ahead of um, the US. So I think there is a cultural difference in terms of the power of sense of belonging. Then I think that's going to be the same regardless of where, where you are. And the reason I say that is that it applies to um, retention of employees in, in corporations and in businesses. Um, it applies to students in universities and, and schools. So we see a, a pretty universal trend of belonging being a driver of retention and motivation. So um, I just don't see that golf is gonna be any different than any other industry, um, even though there might be cultural difference, differences that increase or decrease the likelihood of people feeling a sense of belonging. But I think that it's pretty universal that belonging is, is a driver of behaviors that um, we want to see. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, okay, we'll, we'll tie things off. So first of all, just wanna say thank you to Sue for taking her time out. Um, a long way away from here in Europe at the minute. So thank you, Sue. Uh, really appreciate it. And secondly, just to thank you all as well for taking part in the webinar today. I hope you did find it insightful and enjoyed it. Just as um, if you do have any questions further for me or for Sue, please do drop me an email at tv at cpg.golf. I'm sure, Sue, if, uh, if you've got time, you'll be able to answer them. Yeah. Finally, uh, the next webinar is on Friday with Jose Vicente Perez. That's focusing on marketing for golf instructors. So it might be quite a good follow up from uh, today's session. So once again, thank you all and hopefully we'll see you on Friday.